Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please give a like, subscribe, and share the internet one that you can. Just read out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right into the video. All right, how y'all doing? I hope y'all doing good. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, make sure you take your shoes off before you come to the house. And I know, I'm sorry. I know you guys haven't been in the house in a long time. I was gone for three weeks. I was at a place where I couldn't really bring my stuff, but I will be doing a lot of videos to try to compensate for the time that I was gone. I know, again, I'm sorry. I miss you guys. I know you guys miss me well. I don't want to assume that you guys miss me, but I hope that you did. But we will be doing a lot of stuff with Shyman and a lot of stuff with the other Celtics and possibly some Team USA stuff. If I can find the film and it isn't copyright into Oblivion, the Tatum stuff, I, I, I don't even want to talk about that. But here, we got Bella Shaman here. This is probably going to be one of the, the easier passes that Bella Shaman makes in this video. Again, using his body, his size to get where he wants to be, right? He doesn't have the greatest handle. He does have a handle. It's not the greatest, but sometimes you don't even need to do all the extra moves. He's a very high IQ player. And for a guy that's slower footed than the, the usual athlete of the NBA, he has to use his mind and his body to his advantage. A 6'7", 220, he's a solid kid, right? He's going to, he, he gets to where he wants from three-point line with just one like a couple dribbles just backing this guy down and here anton watson who had a good summer league too just a very heady player another high iq player catches khalil where uh napping kind of a rookie mistake here and they connect on a lot of cuts in the summer league and here just an easy one for shaman and anton all right so here we're gonna see a couple themes with shaman he he is not phased by pressure at all, and he loves to use ball fakes. So here, you're going to see Shaman get trapped by a couple of Miami Heat players, and here he's just he's just moving the ball around, moving the ball around, forcing the defenders to keep their hands up, and he's just, while all this is happening, he's processing, right? While he's, he's getting trapped, he's moving the ball around, making sure the defense stays active, he's processing, and he's trying to find guys. So here, you see him, he's going to make this skip pass to Jemais Ramsey, the no-look you see uh, Jami Hakez right here. He's in the pass lane for Ramsey for a second. Shaman looks at Drew Peterson. Jami Hakez just thinks he's passing there. Gets a wide open shot for Ramsey and he hits it. And something that Shaman loves to do is a lot of times he'll elect to play off two feet. So what that means is either he'll do a jump stop or he'll actually like stop, like stop where he is do a jump stop and, and just elect to process and elect to like move the ball and to find a guy off two feet now this is a little bit different it is playing on two feet but this is different because a great screen by Kata. this is all created because Kata sticks um cold swatter and he is not able to recover on this pick and roll which forces Khalil where to step up now here shaman of course is a guy that is a shooter when you come off aggressive the defense will take heed to that and a good roll by Kata and just a nice find by shaman like this is just natural to him right in the pocket for Kata for the dunk. All right, so here we have more smarts and more misdirection on this play from Bailey Shaman. An easier read, but I just like how he moves the defense when he notices that he's gonna be throwing this ball to Kata. So here, we got Shaman open in the corner. The pump fake is just, again, just being patient. And now he knows he's gonna throw to Kata right there. As he steps to the side right there, he knows he's throwing it to Kata. But what's important here is that we got Castleton and we got Bronny James here on Cater, right? He's going to attract these two guys, move away. As soon as he sees Castleton step up and Bronny run back out, he's going to easily just throw this no-look lob to Cater. And I mean, it's not a lot. I'm, <laughs> it's not much I can say about this. This is just like Anton again, them two connecting. But we got him in transition here. He's running a little bit, just, you know, taking it slow. And then he takes the ball out. And I just think he's gonna reset here. And then he sees Anton and it just shows how high his processing is. And, and again, another no look dime. It's just like an easy, this is, I mean, it's just easy. <laughs> It's a great pass. It's not a lot of analysis with this one, but it's just like he is, this is natural for him. And another pass to Anton to cut. All right, this isn't the strength of, of his game yet, get into the rim, but I would love, 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 love if he was able to get there more. I, The finishing will come as his body improves, but he can make rim reads day one in the NBA. And so here, he draws three defenders into the paint. Bronny comes over. He does a little stutter step. Um, I'm guessing this is to get the center as Anton pops, just to get the center to just second guess a little bit as he gets into the paint. Again, does his little two step and he hits Jordan Walsh directly in the shooting pocket with the jumping pass. Body contact and all that. Two people hit him up in the air, the jumping pass right into Jordan Walsh's shooting pocket. It's a perfect pass. If he's able to get to the rim more, he can create, like he will be a amazing creator in the NBA once his body improves and he gets more athletic and he's able to finish more because then again, that'll just draw even more attention to him as he sprays it out to the shooters. All right, so here y'all gets a Charlotte Hornets. And again, you're gonna see multiple themes in a lot of these clips 
and it just shows how Baylor Shaman is as a player. So here again, you're gonna see him right here catches the ball, and again, you're gonna see the patience and you're gonna see the shot fake. You've seen the shot fake a couple times, it allows him to drive, it allows him to create, and he's just an easy processor with a guy that is slow footed. He has immense basketball IQ. And then again, we have an another drive. Again, this is why I want him to be able to get to the rim more and to finish more because it's just going to open up his playmaking. And as he drives, he's just going to make plays based on how the defense is shifting. He is amazing at just taking what the defense gives him, right? So as he drives, everybody on the weak side right here is going to come right to him. Every Charlotte Hornets defender is right by the paint. And again, we got Anton Watson dropping down a little bit just to create some more space. He's in a tunker spot and Shaman just fires an amazing pass to Ron Harper Jr. as the defense collapsed. All right, so I mentioned him playing off two feet a lot. There will be more cleaner examples of him actually electing to play off two feet, but this is just another example. Now, a lot of the, the things of him as a player is his slower foot speed. And something I saw a lot at, at Creighton was him, you know, playing off two feet. But sometimes that was him electing to play off two feet. And sometimes that was him um, having his dribble forced to be picked up and him still like impressively not being phased by the pressure. That is something I said on the first clip, not being phased by pressure, moving the ball around, trying to find angles, step through moves, everything, just to get the pass lane off. And here, he's reading this corner defender, right? He's in the pass lane between Shaman and, and uh, Anton, right? And you're gonna see the defender, I believe this is, is this Leaky Black? I don't know who 12 is. That, no, that, that, that might be somebody else. But he's like, you know, anticipating the pass a little bit, anticipating the pass, and Shaman, again, uses his solid frame, 6'7", 220, to carve out some space with uh, against Nick Smith Jr. And again, he's gonna leave his feet again, and fires a pass right to Anton, only where Anton can get the pass. Anton pump fake steps in for the mid range. And this is where it all comes together here. This is him electing to play off two feet. So we're in semi transition and he just does a jump stop. He just does a jump stop and he elects to play off two feet. This is where he likes the process. He likes to stop and everything comes together here. The ball face we were talking about, look, just moving the ball, moving the ball, forcing the defense to move to the ball. And then he just surveys and he drops it down right everything comes together in semi transition he just elects to stop and play off two feet and it just is a comfortable position for him as a passer where he can process and he has tilly for the layup and this was one of my favorite plays from shaman here we got the two screens one from anton he rolls one from tilly and he pops and again electing to play off two feet jump stop in control he is rarely out of control right he drives he's in control avoids the charge with the jump stop right anton again being in the right place forcing a defender to pick him up and you see ron harbour jr here this is just an easy read he just knows where to go with the basketball this his passing ability is natural another jumping pass yeah right here easy pass ron harbour jr all right so we got a little two for one here we got shaman with two nice passes in this possession Right here, the first one is a give and go with Killian Tilly, just a, a quick decision allowing Tilly to get a runway to the rim. He makes a nice pass to Drew Peace in the corner. Drew Peace is gonna shoot, he's gonna miss, and the better shot him all in one motion, the rebound and the pass out, right? He just know, he just knows where to go with the basketball. A quick decision to Tilly, first off, gets Tilly a runway, easy pass, and he's gonna come down to get this rebound, average five rebounds in the summer league. I don't know when he looked at Jordan Walsh, well, I'm pretty sure Jordan Walsh is screaming, but all in one motion, right? He looks at Walsh while he's in the air. All one motion, pass out to Jordan Walsh, must need three for him. All right, so this last clip just shows me how high his processing is, right? There are some situations where, you know, again, he's forced to pick up his dribble, but he's able to get out of some crowded situations with last second dimes because his eyes are always up and his size and his craft allows him to get out of situations where his dribble is picked up. As you see right here, dribble picked up a little bit early. It was really just a really well-timed cut by Jordan Walsh, but he's making a quick read, jumping up into the air. Jordan Walsh is also both. But again, this just shows how quick he's processing the game, his craft, he's, he's able to elude the defender here, get close to the basket, and he jumps. I don't think he knew Jordan Walsh was cutting at this time, but as he jumps, he somehow he just finds him. Jordan Walsh has to finish this. But that is the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can. Just read out there a little bit more. I will see you guys in the next video. This is Nick. Peace.